Hello, my name is Dan Burke. I'm with Cisco Systems, and I'm here to present the temporal debugging concept, which is our uh, time traveling capabilities into all debug sessions. I'm getting more questions as to what we've done as opposed to how we've achieved this. So what I'm going to do is spend the majority of my time explaining, uh, actually showing you, demoing what we've done, and then I'll speak against uh, how we've done this. So I'll jump right into a uh, already running simulation here. Uh, point to remember is that we are actually targeting a system C cycle accurate simulation here. So it is running uh, traditional C, C++. You could have a hello world application. And eventually I'm hoping someone can take up the challenge and implement this at the core debug model framework so that it could work with any languages, the JVMs included, so you'd have the time traveling capabilities at that level as well. Currently, our implementation is based on system C uh, cycle accurate simulation. What that means is we have the luxury of being able to halt the entire system and record state, GDB visible state for absolutely every click of the simulation, every, every uh, cycle of the simulation. So let me show you this. What you're seeing right now is a, a multi-core, multi-context simulation of microcode running on a system C simulation. I've halted the system and you get to see let me restart this actually, just to show you how you achieve this. You have a history view. Actually, let me reduce the view even further and just show you the time traveling capability right now. Um, so you are, the, the uh, debug view that you're all used to has the forward stepping buttons as you're all very comfortable with, but now we've introduced the backward stepping equivalents for all the forward stepping controls, including instruction, capable, uh, instruction stepping mode. So uh, they're also key bound to um, shift, alt, F5, F6, F7, and F8 for simplicity's sake. So uh, I've already simulated quite far into the future here. As you can see, this timeline control allows me to jump to any time in the past. It shows me the current simulation's time extents. If I zoom into this area here, you'll see that the simulation's minimum available time is zero. Maximum available is time is 153760. And with a single mouse click, I can just middle click anywhere on the timeline and I've rewound the entire simulation to that, that new location. Absolutely all instantaneous views, which are the views you're used to, the memory uh, content, uh, the register contents, uh, the stack frame, all the GDB versions, all the, the uh, instantaneous views you're used to get populated with the exact content that was in effect at the time you just jumped to. Um, so with a single mouse click, you saw me jump to an arbitrary time, but we have, you know, single stepping capabilities are, are fully functional as well. The only feature you've lost in the process is the ability to mem uh, manipulate anything in the past. You can't change a memory uh, address's content because you might have microcode that is dependent on that. You picture an if branch that says if memory address blah contains a null pointer, take this branch, otherwise take this branch, you rewind simulation, you man manipulate the memory content, and you try to replay that branch, you will take a different path. So the flow has been destroyed, which is exactly the same as the uh, traditional time traveling paradigm states. You can't travel back in the past, kill your grandfather without adversely affecting your own present. Uh, so I will introduce the concept of uh, temporal views. We have a number of temporal views. I'm only showing you one here. There's, you know, <laughs> uh, sensitive information. I'm not allowed to divulge here. But context statistics is a very kind of high-level view that is sensitive not only on the current time set in the UI, but also the time range set. So this UI uh, timeline that I demonstrated earlier also allows you to specify as you would expect in a video editor, a mark in and a mark out. And so all, this, all the uh, views that are a slave off of you are now only showing you the information pertinent to that newly selected time range. And that time range can be selected visually in the IDE or in the uh, timeline viewer this way. Or if I drag and drop the entire simulation into the history view, you get to see all high level state of all context in your system over time. And we actually have some UI tricks under the, 
under the scenes here that uh, for each vertical pixel you see here, the intensity of red needs to show more information than is available for that tick. You might actually perform more than one memory transaction per pixel vertically. So the intensity of red is a normalized uh, intensity of the entire simulation's maximums. When you do isolate a section of time that is of interest to you, like for example, the timelines, for example, a perfect example of what you're seeing right here, the memory accesses. When you're comparing two contexts, memory accesses, if I zoom into a certain memory area here or a, a certain time range here, I can just zoom by dragging, dropping a rectangle. And as soon as I drop the mouse, you are now seeing more details for that section of time. Let me do it again because I'm not far enough into it to see the actual transactions. There you go. Now you see that for each tick here, uh, I apologize, my mouse is very sluggish right now because I'm suffering the lag times. I have to uh, VPN into Cisco server that's running the actual IDE. So I'm not only suffering the VPN access, but also the, VN, uh, the VNC access there. So, okay, getting off track here. Um, Time travel can also be done by simple, simply double-clicking on a transaction of interest. When you double-click on an event, you will, you will rewind or fast-forward back in time to that event. You can zoom into the timeline and select current time, and you see where that took, took place in the uh, simulation. Last thing I think I have time to explain is uh, you also have full breakpoint capabilities. If you think about it, as soon as I've switched to... Uh, a different area of time, I'm no longer speaking to the actual simulation. I'm speaking to a uh, database that has recorded all these events. So it's important for me to actually quietly remove all CDI breakpoints from the actual target and reinstall them into our uh, SIMVO, which is TiVo for simulations. And we have in the, between these two components, I have about uh, one and a half minutes left here. What has actually happened is I launched the system C simulation and the SIMVO, which is essentially just a GDB uh, state database that records all state for every tick. And we have something, the GDB multiplexer, which is our flux capacitor, that allows both processes to appear as a single GDBMI target to the IDE. Parallel to all of this, we also have, oops, well, I'm just uh, screen capping a couple of things here. Parallel to this, we also have a performance database that records all um, events that have occurred, such as a memory transactions, uh, such as a memory transaction, and that allows us to do the performance metrics that allow you to isolate in, uh, times of interest in your simulation and zoom into that and replay those. And there's no limit to how many times you, you can fast forward, rewind, and etc. I have one minute left, so uh, I'll just mention we had a birds of a feather session last night. So if you are interested, just time travel back to last night, and you can attend. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? I know. Please uh, come and visit me after the, after the presentation if you have any questions. Thank you.